Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 437. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. Today, we're going to talk about where the top performing ETFs are. I wanted to talk about this today because recently I got into a conversation with someone who was telling me they really had sort of lost hope in the stock market. And I asked why, and they said, well, the S&P 500 has really been underperforming, and so therefore the stock market really isn't doing what it used to do. And I was really pretty dumbfounded because Uh, well, for a lot of reasons, which I'll share with you, but that isn't exactly how I see it at all. First of all, we have to always take a long-term view of the stock market. If you don't have five years or longer to invest, then you probably shouldn't be in the stock market. But if you have longer than five years to invest, then it's absolutely something that you wanna look at. Point number two, you don't want to just be in the S&P 500. That's a huge mistake that a lot of investors are making right now, is they're only buying large companies. The S&P 500 is made up of the 500 largest companies in the US. That's missing out on so much of the investing universe that's available that is not even funny. You see, investments can move from area to area for top performance. Yes, large companies can do well, but also small companies can do well, or medium-sized companies called mid-caps can do well. International companies can do well for periods of time better than the US market. So money rotates and fluctuates and flows, and to just be in one square, if you will, of the grid of that is really not being diversified properly. You wanna have your money spread across lots of different squares. Think of it like a tic-tac-toe board and you have nine total squares. You have three rows of three and you want to have some in small, medium and large companies. You wanna have some in international, emerging markets, maybe real estate, some different sectors. You want to have your money spread across some different asset classes or different types of investments. That way, no matter what area is doing well, you own that and you're participating in that great growth. For example, right now, the best place to invest, and it has been for a few years now, is actually smaller companies that are called small caps. Small capitalization, the shortened term for that is small caps. So we're gonna talk about where those small caps have been performing and how much they've performed because people don't realize how big these numbers are for a three and a five year average annual return. And if you're just looking at the S&P 500 or you have all your eggs in that basket, you're missing out on the small companies that are really outperforming right now. In fact, according to Investors Business Daily, it says small cap U.S. diversified exchange traded funds, ETFs, have rallied recently as investors move money out of large caps, large companies, amid heightened trade war fears. Small cap companies tend to generate most of their profits from the U.S. All right, so the vast majority of great performance right now is coming from the smaller companies, whether that's due to trade war fears or whether that's due to being at the end of the cycle where smaller companies can tend to do better or whether that's something that we may be coming more toward a recession where we're seeing short-term rates rise quickly and they're almost rising faster than long-term rates. What that does is that tends to do what's called flattening the yield curve, which means that 
the shorter term rates and the longer term rates are about the same, that makes almost a straight line and that's a flattening yield curve. So when that happens and you have shorter term rates that are rising faster, it can portend a recession coming. Now, the Federal Reserve is the one that's causing the short term rates to rise and that's because they're raising them about every quarter, about a quarter of a percent. So every three months, they're raising interest rates about a quarter of a percent and they've projected to do that two more times in 2018. So we'll have another half a percent by the end of this year, which means those short term rates are gonna be higher by another half a percent. So that tends to make short term rates rise. The long term interest rate on a 10 year treasury is only about two and a half percent. So you've got these short term rates that are going up, you've got long term rates that are only at two and a half percent. That's a pretty flat yield curve. So that's saying we may have a recession coming. If that's the case, you want to be in perhaps smaller companies who can ride through a recession better. They don't have a lot of overhead. They don't have a lot of extra employees that they have to lay off. They can be a little speedboat and make lots of changes very quickly rather than being the big tanker that takes a while to turn the ship around. So a lot of people might want to be in smaller companies now and that might be why it's getting some more attention but take a look at some of these numbers because on a one-year basis for example the best small cap etf is up 19 percent and on a three-year basis 16.1 percent on a five-year basis 16 percent so 16 percent for five years great return and again that's why you want to have some of these smaller companies in your portfolio because if this is where the performance is, you're not gonna participate in that unless you have some money invested in it. This is also something that if you're in a 401k, your company will usually provide you with some asset allocation models that will tell you how much to put in each one of those squares, those tic-tac squares that I mentioned. They'll tell you what percentage of your money should be in each one of those. So you look for an ETF that is a small cap ETF, plug that into the small cap percentage of the asset allocation model. So for example, if they said 15% should be in small cap ETFs, then you find that from your list available on your 401k and you put 15% of your money in there. So what was that small cap ETF that I mentioned? It was First Trust small cap and the symbol was FYC. The second best performing ETF was the Spider S&P 600 small cap growth, which is symbol SLYG, and it was up 15.5% year to date, and on a three-year basis, 14.6, and on a five-year basis, 16.5%. Then the iShares S&P 500 small cap 600 growth, symbol IJT. And that was up 15.4% year to date on a three year average 14.6 and 16.5, same as the Spider S&P 600 small cap growth. The fourth best performing was the iShares Russell 2000 growth, symbol IWO. It was up 15% year to date and for three years up 11.7%, five years 15.2%. Then the Invesco QQQ Trust symbol QQQ, up 14.2% year to date, 18.4% for a three year average and 21.5% on a five year average. Now I do have to say the QQQ is a technology ETF. So just know that you're going to be in companies that are technology oriented. So it's really more of a sector fund. It may have less diversification. It might have more fluctuation. And that's why you're getting the higher return there because they are probably taking more risk. They have a higher beta, meaning it just is, it's gonna take more risk and fluctuate. Then the Invesco S&P 500 pure growth, symbol RPG. Year to date, it's up 13.7%. On a three year average, it's up 13.1. And on a five year average, 16.4. So again, these are US diversified ETFs. And you can see that the first four were really small cap. Then we had the QQQs, the technology fund. And now we had the S&P 500. So the larger companies, you can see how they've performed. And then the Vanguard small cap growth, VBK, 
year to date up 13.6%, three years 11%, five years 13.6%. Then we have the iShares Core S&P Small Cap, symbol IJR, up 13.1% year-to-date, up 14.2% on a three-year basis, and 157 on a five-year basis. Then the Innovator IBD50, symbol FFTY, up 12.7% year-to-date, and 127 on a three-year basis. We don't have a five-year. It must be younger than five years old. Then we have the First Trust Large Cap Growth Alpha Dex, symbol FTC, up 12.3% year to date, 12.1% on a three year average, and 15.8% on a five year average. Then the First Trust Dorsey Wright Dynamic, symbol FVC, up 12.1% year to date, and uh, it only has a one month performance, 3.5% for one month. It doesn't have a three or a five year average, so brand new fund. Also the Dorsey Wright Focus 5, symbol FV, up 11.9 year to date, up 8.1 on a three year average, and there is no five year average on that one either. Pretty new fund. And then finally, the Russell Vanguard 2000 VTWO symbol, year to date up 11.9%, three years 11.6, and five years 13.7. Now this all compares to the S&P 500 index, which is up 4.5% year to date, 11.8% for three years and 14.1% for five years. So you can see there were several of these funds that I talked about that have outperformed the S&P 500, the large cap, large companies, the 500 largest in the US. And so you wanna have a sprinkling of some of these smaller companies in your portfolio. You also wanna make sure that you're looking to the long term. If you can simply average the typical 10% average that the stock market has averaged over about a 90 year period of time, you know, year in, year out, it's gonna do sometimes better, sometimes worse. But if you can be in it for the long term and average about a 10% average rate of return, you're gonna do very well. And you'll have a nice retirement fund at the end of your investment life. So to be worried about what the S&P has done for the last few years or the fact that year to date, what it's doing, it's simply just not something that you wanna be paying attention to. You wanna be looking at the long-term track records. You wanna make sure you're well diversified, that your asset allocation is a good mix of different exchange traded funds or other mutual funds. You want to just be sure that you're covering all the boxes so that you can participate wherever that great performance is happening, you're gonna have some in your portfolio and it's gonna to continue to build your wealth and help you reach your financial goals for financial freedom. I know that was a lot of numbers and I apologize for that. So I am going to leave this chart on my website where you can look at pictures like this. So I'll be able to post that on the website at lindapjones.com and just go to the podcast section and then this number of podcasts, 437, and you'll be able to see the chart for yourself. If you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. If you haven't left a review yet for Be Wealthy and Smart, I'd love to hear from you. What are you waiting for? I wanna know what you think about the show and I love reading people's reviews. And if we haven't connected yet on Instagram, get your daily tips and quotes and ideas and fun things about wealth building over at instagram.com forward slash Linda P. Jones. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.